Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us. I'm Chris Suter. Nikki Burdine has the evening off. Yeah, Nicole, and if you think the background is interesting, take a look at the area around us right now. There is water running on Tate's Creek Road here to my right. There's also water running all the way over here to my left. This is a serious situation. A Hardin County father is dead after becoming the victim in an overnight shooting. Yeah, it's almost like you planned out that eight day forecast. The rain's out of here by the end of the week. Next weekend will be nice too. That's perfect. Well, Kevin, as you might be able to tell, this is a pretty busy road for most of the day. It's hard to make a turn onto this road, even harder to cross it. But imagine two three year olds crossing the road. That exact scenario played out Friday morning. The details are in tonight's LEX 18 Big Story at six. Well, Chris and Nicole, I can tell you that it has been a very scary morning for every single person involved out here today. And let's show you exactly why that uh, crashed police cruiser still sitting here on Winchester Road. Finally, how far would you go for love? This Portland woman smuggled herself inside a pink suitcase for her boyfriend. Yeah, that's right. His name is Steve Buttleman, and he's responsible for one of the most important parts of the race, the call to the post. This is LEX 18 News at 11. The search is over. Now a Harrison County man has been found safe. That's tonight's LEX 18 Big Story at 11. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us. I'm Chris Suter. Nikki Burdine has the evening off. A Harrison County family is counting their blessings after a man missing for more than a day has been found alive. LEX 18's Josh Breslow joins us here in the studio with the latest. Josh, it's Chris. Back to you. All right, Josh, thanks very much. Now to a developing story. Police are searching for a man that walked away from the Marion County Adjustment Center. 33-year-old George Wesley Upton has been missing since Tuesday, May 29th. He was serving a 10-year sentence for wanton endangerment on a police officer and fleeing and evading police. He has tattoos on his chest, back, neck, and both arms. He may be driving a 1993 blue and silver GMC Sierra pickup with tags that say 419 GAE. One person is dead after a rollover accident on Interstate 71. It happened just before 3 this afternoon near mile marker 7 in Louisville. Police say a man driving a Jeep lost a tire. The Jeep then crossed the northbound lanes of traffic over a guardrail and slammed into a tree. The victim's name has not been released. A Hardin County father is dead after becoming the victim in an overnight shooting. It happened in an apartment just off US 31 in Elizabethtown. Friends and family are shocked after 32 year old Frank Knapp was found shot to death. Well, it wasn't the race so many had hoped for. The favorite and triple crown contender all have another pulled from the post a day before the Belmont Stakes. Still, the horse did make one final appearance in the winner's circle. NBC's Jay Gray has details from Belmont Park. Belmont Park. More than 85,000 people were in the crowd at Belmont Park. All right, a Portland woman says she'll do anything to see her boyfriend, and she went to the extremes to do it, and that's making some people take notice. That story in just a few minutes right here on LEX 18 News at 11. How do you start over when everything you've ever known is gone? Unbelievable. I would have never imagined it would done this. That question is what the people of Salyersville are asking today. This town took an unbelievable hit last night by an unforgiving storm that spared nothing. Not churches. I knelt on the steps and I cried and I prayed. Nor schools, restaurants or homes. We hovered down underneath a shelf and as it come in we could see the roof starting to rip off on the side of us and we could see it's swirling bass. Bonnie Howard says she survived in this bathroom every second horrifying. And when she and her son got out, it was even worse. And we came out and we tried to find somebody to to help us and there was nobody. Everybody was hurt. Now these battered and bruised people will somehow find out how to move forward in the days and months ahead, still thankful, they say, for what they still have. We're just glad we're alive. Covering the storms in McGoffin County, Chris Suter, LEX 18 News. High above the crowd. It's awesome. Absolutely awesome. Six floors above the historic race. And it may be the most terrifying moment 
of your year, but it's also, without doubt, the most exhilarating. He's one of the most familiar voices in all of Kentucky, even though you've probably never seen his face. The Whooper comes by them all. The Whooper has taken the lead. Galloping Domino tries to kick back to the inside rail. Mark Johnson is going into his third year as track announcer of the Run for the Roses. Of all the places in the world where I ever would want to be, it's there in that position at that moment, waiting for those gates to open. That certainly doesn't mean it's easy. Mark spends a lot of time prepping before each race he calls on Derby Week. The one always has red, the two is white, the three is blue, the four is yellow. Examining his color-coded shot sheet. So the rubber stamp with the outline of a jockey's silks and the silks I expect the jockeys to carry. Using his binoculars to get one last good look at the horses before they hit the track running. Galloping Domino goes in next. Followed in by Runaway Yankee. And when it's time... And they're off. Boy, is he on. The outside the Whooper comes by them all. The Whooper has taken the lead. With Gallop the enthusiasm and love for horse racing that makes Churchill Downs such a special place to be each year. This transcends a racetrack and it transcends a sporting venue. It's, it's actually a piece of modern history. There's always a watchful eye on Danville Pike in Houstonville. Joe Taylor considers it his second job when he's not selling veggies. At the beginning of July, though, he found himself witnessing one bizarre plan taking shape across the street when four women got out of a car and knocked on the door, but no one was home. They came back down and ran back down the steps, and they went around the back of the house. It wasn't long until Taylor knew something wasn't right and called the police chief. Taylor says the chief ended up confronting two armed intruders, Takesha Horton and Autumn Drass. He said she stepped up behind the refrigerator with a butcher knife in her hand. A struggle followed and ended with the two in cuffs and having their things confiscated. That's when authorities made quite the find. Deputies say both women were deaf and also in one of their text messages was an elaborate plan to kill this woman, 82-year-old Lois Good. I'm kind of worried when night comes. I can't hardly sleep. The reason behind it, the sheriff says, a fight between lesbians, Good's daughter Debbie, and this woman, Jessica Callahan, he says, both of whom are also deaf. Debbie had took her girlfriend away from her, and to hurt Debbie like she uh, said she got hurt while she was going to kill me. On that day, Lois wasn't home and considers herself lucky and also thankful for the man across the street who spoke up when it mattered. Covering the news in Lincoln County, Chris Souter, LEX 18 News. Today, very nice afternoon, mid-80s, but the rain returns for us tomorrow. Yeah, it's almost like you planned out that eight-day forecast. The rain's out of here by the end of the week. Next weekend will be nice, too. That's perfect. Yeah, all right, Matt, thank you very much. All right. A bunch of bugs are causing problems in California. They've been eating up the entire town. That story is coming up next on LEX 18 News at 11. Thousands of Girl Scouts rock the National Mall in Washington, D.C. today to celebrate the organization's 100th anniversary. Some 200,000 Girl Scouts from every state in the country gathered. The organization is hoping to set a world record for the largest gathering of Girl Scouts in history. The Girl Scouts Rock the Mall event featured guest stars like Mandy Moore and Erin Willits. You might remember her as a finalist on NBC's The Voice. And finally, how far would you go for love? This Portland woman smuggled herself inside a pink suitcase for her boyfriend. Yeah, that's right. She said she had gotten in trouble with the apartment manager just weeks before, and he had banned her from the building. So she and her boyfriend hatched a plan. The boyfriend was seen every day coming and going with his suitcase that you see right there. Other tenants grew suspicious, and when the police were called, they found the woman crammed inside. And if you're wondering, after all that, the apartment manager says the woman still cannot step foot inside of the building. Makes you wonder what she did, huh? All right, well, the Belmont Stakes didn't have, I'll have another, but the race did provide a photo finish. Plus, Woodford County was playing for the high school baseball state championship. We'll have highlights and reaction. That's next in LEX 18 Sports. Thanks for watching. Saturday Night Live is next. Good night.